Hi everyone, my name is Brendan Hodek and I'm an instructor at New York Speech Coaching here in New York City. Welcome to episode number nine of Voice Breakdown, the show where we teach you how to imitate some of the most iconic voices. In today's episode, we are going to be breaking down one of the most unique and recognizable voices, the voice of Gilbert Gottfried. Oh boy, what a wonderful human being! You might know Gilbert from his stand-up comedy, as Iago from Disney's Aladdin, Jeff and even possibly as the Aflac Duck. Aflac. Or you might just know him as that guy with that crazy voice. His voice is instantly recognizable. Let's start breaking this voice down. Component number one, the vocal cords. Gilbert's pitch is all over the place. Generally, we want to have a higher pitched voice. Mm -hmm. He is known for that shrill, shrieking quality, but his pitch does vary greatly. What makes Gilbert's voice so distinct is all the distortion that occurs. In the future, we're going to do a video that goes into all the different types of distortion more in depth. For today, be aware that there are many different ways to get distortion. Some of them can even sound very similar. How did he do that distortion? Was it the epiglottis in the back of the tongue? Was it the ventricular folds? Was it the areopiglottic folds? A uvular trill? Was it the areopiglottic sphincter? Perhaps he used vocal fry. There are lots of options and Gilbert likes to employ many of them. In our jigsaw video, we discussed using the false vocal cords. Oftentimes, Gilbert contracts these for some distortion. While using them, he is also producing a higher pitched voice. Learn how to first use the false cords by themselves. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Then learn how to do the higher pitched voice. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Then add them together. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Another type of distortion sometimes used by Gilbert is vocal fry. We could talk about vocal fry for days, but for now, just know that it is that poppy, crackling sound you can make with your true vocal cords. Uh... Most of the time, people associate vocal fry with lower pitches, but you can actually slide this cracking, distorted sound all throughout your range. Uh... Practice sliding this vocal fry very slowly, as it can be difficult to maintain the fry in the higher registers when you first start trying it. Once you can do it up that high, throw that into his voice. I was wondering how I was doing that. Lastly, we might also want to use something called twang. This is a narrowing of something known as the airy epiglottic sphincter and can give us a brighter, more squeezed sound. Check out Voice Lessons to the World episode 77 for more information on that. If we squeeze that twang enough, we get some distortion. Wow! 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 There are other ways to get distortion, but these three are the ones most utilized by Gilbert. Component number two, the larynx. As you probably imagine, for a voice as bright as Gilbert's, we want to raise the larynx a bit. However, there are moments when he lowers it. When you hear his voice become a bit darker, lower the larynx a hair. Oh, I know what he's talking about. I do go down sometimes. Component number three, the tongue. The tongue is not a primary component for this voice. We do want to raise it slightly in the back just to add a bit more brightness and to make things sound even more effortful. Component number four, the soft palate. You can probably guess that we want some nasal resonance for this voice to continue to make the voice brighter. Lower the soft palate to allow this to happen. Component number five, articulation. Being from Brooklyn, New York, Gilbert has a very pronounced New York dialect. We want to make sure to have a very strong oa vowel. I want some coffee! We want to drop er sounds at the ends of words and replace it with a. You're like a brother to me! And we want to insert er where it doesn't belong. Sounds like a terrible idea! One more thing to note is how overdone every sound is. We want to over-articulate all of our sounds. Even just scrunching the face and making every sound feel like it takes a lot of effort will help you to get his articulation just right. Component number six, prosody. Prosody is definitely important for Gilbert. For one, he's always shouting! When speaking like Gilbert, we want to be intense. He is always louder and more intense than the situation calls for. 
just when you think you have gone high enough and distorted enough, he adds a little more! He also will sometimes come slightly down in intensity just to bring it back up again! Rhythmically, we really want to punch our sounds. Oftentimes, he will separate the syllables just to make his speech seem even more effortful. Let's recap. Component number one, the vocal cords. We want to raise our pitch and make it as grating and shrill as possible with all of the various types of distortions. Component number two, the larynx. We definitely want to raise the larynx so we can get the brightest and most strained sound possible. Component number three, the tongue. Raise the tongue slightly, otherwise we don't need to worry too much about this component. Component number four, the soft palate. Lower the soft palate a bit to allow for some nasal resonance. Component number five, articulation. Throw on your most exaggerated Brooklyn accent and over-articulate your sounds. Component number six, prosody. Shout all of the time and only lower the pitch so that you can raise it back up high again. Thank you for watching New York Speech Coaching's Voice Breakdown episode number nine. Be sure to watch future episodes of Voice Breakdown, the show where we teach you how to imitate some of the most iconic voices. See you next time.